Hello, I'm Bishop Richard Pates and currently serving as Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Crookston. And that means that I'm the interim bishop between Bishop Hepner and the great news that we have received today here in the Diocese of Crookston is the appointment by Pope Francis of our new bishop, Bishop Andrew Cousins. And Bishop Cousins has served for the past eight years as the auxiliary bishop of St. Paul in Minneapolis and has created a wonderful background for service here in Crookston. And I know the people are tremendously delighted. You'll find here a welcoming uh, people, priests, deacons, and all of those who are involved in the service, and especially the faithful as you come here and are with us, Bishop Cousins. So welcome. Thank We're you. We're very excited about it. So I think the first thing that the people would like to know is a little bit about yourself yeah, uh, and about your parents, your family, et cetera, and your background. Yeah, just to say first, I'm delighted to be here and I couldn't be more happy. Uh, you know, the, the sunshine of the day reflects what's going on in my own heart in terms of my enthusiasm and excitement to be here. So just so grateful that the Holy Father would uh, give me the opportunity to serve here. Very grateful. But a little bit about me. I grew up in a, a, a small family. My, I have an older adopted brother who's African-American who still lives in Denver and he has two children and I have an older sister she lives in uh, the Twin Cities where I have lived and she has seven children and then my parents are both still living uh, thanks be to God and they spend the cold months in Arizona which is where they've gone now for the winter uh, my dad is in his early 80s and my mom's in her late 70s uh, but they're still full of energy and lots of love and so um, they're, I'm sure they're going to be here I told them this morning they had to be here on December 6th for the installation and if they're watching, you got to, you must be very proud of your son. He's uh, <laughs> really here today to uh, come to the Great Diocese of Crookston. And we'd say from the family life, every evidence is that you've done a tremendous job. So yeah. welcome to you too, as you perhaps uh, watch us today. You grew up in Colorado. Yeah, I grew up in a wonderful Catholic family in the Rockies. Um, we moved there when I was four. Uh, we moved there because I had very serious asthma and we needed to be close to a place that was good for my asthma. Thankfully, the Lord has healed me of my asthma over the years, so I've gotten better. Um, but the, uh, yeah, I grew up in Colorado in a wonderful Catholic family. Uh, really, I thought about being a priest when I, was, when I was a young person, and even in first or second grade, the Lord planted that seed of a vocation in my heart and uh, really was planted by my parish priest, Monsignor Barry, who was a great example to me uh, that a priest could live a joyful life. And so it was, I think, in second grade when I said to my mom, I want to be a priest like Monsignor Barry, kind of as soon as I started serving Holy Mass. That was a great privilege for me. So grew up in a good Catholic family, went to Benedictine College in Atchison, Kansas, um, and uh, was actually had several friends from my time in college who entered priesthood or religious life. Three of them joined the monastery. One of them is the abbot now at St. Benedict's Abbey. And uh, others became diocesan priests like me. Um, and it was after college that I uh, decided to serve a year with Net Ministries and traveled for a year putting on retreats for high school students across the country. And the joy was that my first diocese I served was the Diocese of Crookston. So you're no stranger to us. Right, yeah. yeah. Where did you travel when you came to We did retreats from Crookston. Barnesville to War Road, from okay. the south and corner to the north. Okay. And everywhere in between, we were in Thief River Falls and Ada, and we were here at the Cathedral Parish in Crookston. I stayed at Mount St. Benedict when I was yes. here. So I have many, many fond memories from my time here as a net, min, as a net missionary. And uh, so it was very exciting for me actually to drive past uh, Barnesville last night on my way up here right. and to remember those, those wonderful experiences. After net, then I served for a year as a missionary with St. Paul's Outreach. I joined a fraternity of diocesan priests in the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis, and uh, did my seminary there at St. Paul Seminary and was ordained a priest in 1997. And then I had two assignments. Um, first, so I was the assistant pastor at the cathedral in St. Paul. I loved that ministry, um, lots of time in the confessional, also the big liturgies that we had at the cathedral. And then I was sent uh, to a rural parish by our standards to Faribault, Minnesota, about an hour south of the Twin Cities. And I, I served the three churches there as a part of the Faribault Catholic community. And so I um, was there. We had did a lot of youth ministry during those couple of years. We had a Catholic grade school and a Catholic high school. And then Archbishop Flynn asked me to go and study in Rome. And so I spent four years working on a doctorate degree in Rome. And when I came back, I was assigned as a formator and professor at the St. Paul Seminary. So seven and a half years at the St. Paul Seminary before I got the call from Pope Francis or from the papal nuncio representing Pope Francis, who told me in 2013 that I would be the auxiliary bishop of St. Paul, Minneapolis. So I spent the last eight years serving the Archdiocese. 
Wonderful. So that's a very event-filled uh, background in history. I remember a uh, father, especially, or bishop, excuse me, uh, when I was an auxiliary bishop of St. Paul, Minneapolis, and went with Archbishop Flynn for our odd limited visits. Yes. And uh, you were a student studying there, a pre-student, and two or three of your other of your uh, confreres from the archdiocese uh, met with us and the Pope. Pope right. John Paul II had wonderful pictures of him. So I think I still have a picture of uh, that gathering. Yes. And uh, so many years ago, and now you've uh, come to this particular moment. What would you say that you've enjoyed most as a priest? Yeah, you know, um, over the years in my priestly ministry, I've enjoyed many things. Certainly my work, work with young people. Whenever I have the chance to be with young people or to preach to young people or just to be with them and share faith with them, that for me is a great joy, and I, I always look forward to those experiences. I would say also I love to teach. Um, I love to teach about prayer. I love to teach about the sacraments, um, to try to help people come to an understanding of their faith. And I, I think God's given me some teaching gifts, and so I really love to do that kind of thing. And I love spiritual direction. I've been a spiritual director for many different people over the years, and it's something that I uh, even still have been able to do a little bit as a bishop. keeps me grounded in the spiritual realities of life when I do that kind of work. And uh, so I really love whatever brings me out to be with the people. Sometimes you joke as an uh, auxiliary bishop in a big city that you know you do banquets for a living <laughs> because you go to, you're always out with the people. But for me, those were always a delight because I love to be with people. Well, that's tremendous. And uh, as I say, it kind of moves on to being a bishop. Bishop Flynn, Archbishop Flynn, whom I served as an auxiliary bishop for seven years, similarly to you, the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis said, you know, I would be a priest a million times over. I said, Bishop, never. <laughs> so, you know, it has its challenges yes. and uh, what it's going up. So what do you expect as you come in your own challenges that you've experienced yeah. as a bishop? You know, it's worth stating that um, I did have some challenges as an auxiliary bishop. I, was, I became an auxiliary bishop in the middle of the largest crisis in the history of the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. We were just beginning the sexual abuse crisis in 2013, which really had broken the papers just eight days before I got the call from the papal nuncio. And so I was a part of the, the healing and restoration of trust that happened in the Archdiocese. And I'm very proud of the work that uh, we did. It wasn't, of course, it wasn't just me. There were many collaborators. And, but we really did, I think, change the culture in the Archdiocese and build a culture of transparency, build a culture of trust, build a culture where uh, people began to see that we meant what we said and we would do what we said. And that I had to really learn how to deal with every aspect of the sexual abuse crisis, whether that was dealing with the criminal and the civil authorities, the police, and we were criminally and civilly charged. And so I worked very closely with the Ramsey County attorneys to really develop a solution that could help be a win-win, you know? I began to realize that the, um, the civil authorities, they have the same desire that the church has, which is to keep people safe. And they really are collaborators and partners in that. Worked through bankruptcy. Um, we had, you know, one of the largest settlements in the history of bankruptcy, $210 million, 450 victims. So uh, I learned all of the insides and outsides of that difficult work had to work with priests in difficult situations and um, even at times had to pull priests from ministry because of accusations of sexual abuse. So I've dealt with all those things. And in particular, if I had to highlight one aspect of it, I would say it was learning to listen to victims and spending time with the victims has become very important. And I've seen how when you listen to victims, you get a different perspective on the sexual abuse crisis. And I've had the privilege that some victims have even allowed me to walk with them as a spiritual director and help with their healing. Um, and to me, that's been one of the great privileges of my time as a bishop, is to try to find ways, little ways that I can, to, to help people who've been hurt by the church. You know, really, you learn in this work that uh, priestly or clerical sexual abuse is the worst kind of sexual abuse. And it's the worst because it actually damages people's relationship with God who's meant to be the source of healing. So I really hope that um, whatever I can do in the Diocese of Crookston, it will be about bringing healing and uh, helping people who ha perhaps have been hurt by the church um, or have found uh, difficulties or pain in their own life to come to healing. 
And uh, that's something I, as a real desire of mine as we go forward. Well, great. I think all of us bishops, you know, have had a similar experience. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the first bishops' conferences of the USCCB was in Dallas, Texas, mm. when in the wake of uh, the Boston expose of the paper there, uh, that, you know, we really came through and made uh, together, you know, the wonderful document that emanated from there. Mm -hmm. And so I agree with you that uh, some of the most painful moments for me is to have to listen to victims. I mean, mm -hmm. not to have to listen to them, but just to receive their difficulty and problems. You know, right. it's a terrific uh, challenge. Right. But I think at the same time that we've moved, you know, we have mm -hmm. moved in a direction that addressed this uh, situation perhaps as best as any institution in the world. Mm -hmm. Not happy, it's not good. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think uh, people always realize how far we've come. You're right. And uh, so, you know, the press, other people get kind of cemented into one place, but we have moved forward. And I think that's the case here in the uh, Diocese of Kirkston. Yeah. So I think we moved, uh, and you know, in a certain sense, we have to move on too, because we have to be about our mission. Exactly. And, uh, so yep. that's an important, important aspect of it, uh, what we're about. So uh, then you've uh, now served as auxiliary bishop there, and you know, as you come to Kirkston, yep. what sort of pastoral dreams do you have? Yeah. What would you like to see as a bishop, as a father, as a shepherd? You know, you're gonna have the, uh, the sheep smell of the northwestern Minnesota on you, <laughs> as uh, Pope Francis so beautifully says so often. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what are your dreams? What do you hope? Yeah. You know, the first thing I want to do is just get to know people. That's going to be the first work. Mm -hmm. um, really anxious to do some listening sessions around the, archdi around the diocese and, and to, to learn the people and really to learn what are their needs and mm -hmm. what, what, are, what are their desires. Of course, I come with an evangelistic heart. That's, mm -hmm. that's who I am. And so I want to preach Jesus Christ and the joy that Jesus Christ is. And I want to see people come alive to the relationship with Jesus Christ and what that means for their life, especially young people. That'll certainly be a focus of what I do. And I want to be able to help people be formed into mature Christian disciples, when really missionary disciples. We live in a time, you know, where the church is in many ways diminishing. Um, that has a lot to do with culture and the demands that the culture puts on us and the difficulties of our culture. And so uh, this is the time for the church to move from maintenance to mission. And so I'll certainly be about that. I've got a lot of energy. I'm still young. I want to bring that energy here. And I want to help our people move from maintenance to mission. And that means coming to know deeply who Jesus is and what Jesus' plan is for my life. That's the kind of formation I want to help people grow in. Well, I think, you know, you'll have plenty of opportunity here in the Diocese of Crookston, as we just discussed at the uh, little press conference we had here, that uh, we have a project called The Perfect Fit. Mm -hmm. And The Perfect Fit is an uh, opportunity for us to kind of move to the next experience here in the Diocese of Crookston. You uh, fit in well with that. You kind of <laughs> become one of the aspects of The Perfect Fit. And I think also that uh, that means we're going to move from you know, our present headquarters are transferred to the Benedictine Sisters, beautiful Benedictine uh, hub here in, uh, right at the hill. And uh, so it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. We're so grateful for all the people in the Diocese of Crookston are supporting it. Thu's mm -hmm. excited as mm -hmm. they move around the diocese. They're all kind of right behind it. So mm -hmm. I think that would be a wonderful experience for you. Mm -hmm. Also, we have through the uh, Bishop, or uh, for Deacon Crutchie, uh, a movement called Missionary Disciples, which you're talking about today, mm -hmm. been very effective and he has worked extraordinarily hard. And when I go to the parishes, they're talking about that too. And finally, Pope Francis has introduced to us the Synodal Way. Right. And so uh, we're actually going to have at the opening on uh, the, uh, I mean, October 31st year, Halloween, mm -hmm. invite all the saints, the new saints to come mm -hmm. in and then have uh, prepared for you in the, after the first of the year, a lot of discussions. So, you know, it, it kind of vivifies, I think, for us, the spirit of Francis. So, mm -hmm. as you uh, talk about the Pope, can you tell us about uh, the document he has written and also Pope John Paul II that have been inspirations for you? Yeah, I said in the press conference, and it's really true, the, if you want to know sort of what my um, textbooks are or what my plan might be, there's really two documents that are very much inspire me. One is uh, Nuovo Millennio Enuente by St. John Paul II, which is on the coming of the third millennium. And he wrote that at the end of the Jubilee year, the year 2000, as a kind of pastoral plan for the new millennium. And so that document became very important for me, but it's really in the same spirit of Evangelii Gaudium of, mm -hmm. of Pope, Pope Francis, which really lays out Pope Francis's pastoral plan for the church during his whole papacy. 
Uh, it's my favorite document of Pope Francis, and I had the opportunity in January when we had our limited visits uh, to speak with him about that, and he said it was his favorite document that he's written as well, and he said it's the most important document that really is that plan for his whole pontificate. And so really what he talks about in terms of a spirit-filled evangelizer in the last section of that document, for me, I found those words so inspiring, and that's really the sort of uh, what I want to help facilitate in the Diocese of Crookston, is that people would be spirit-filled evangelizers, deeply committed Christian disciples, deeply committed to their faith, but also ready to share that, because the world is desperately in need of the message that we have. Right, and I think that's what they're prepared for it here. They already are doing it in so mm -hmm. many beautiful ways. And what you experience up here in Northwest uh, Minnesota is the beautiful environment. Yeah. And uh, the uh, opportunity on the east to be a part of the lakes, the pines, the birches, the trees. Yep. So, Rich, I was just there yesterday. Yeah. And then to come over here to the most fertile land in almost the whole country. Wow. And uh, so it really does serve the people. And so the genuine kind of dimension of the people, I think, arises from their experience in the environment. Yeah. So I think that they're committed to that, along with Pope Francis, yep. you know, trying to get the environment the best. It's true. So as you come, we're very delighted to have you with us, uh, Bishop. We look forward to welcoming your parents, your family, etc. That the Bishop will come on uh, December 5th in the evening for a Vesper service, a welcome service. You'll be welcomed by the rector of the cathedral. Mm -hmm. who, uh, when you knock on that door, he'll be ready there <laughs> to welcome you and to say, delighted to have you. And then, of course, the next day with Archbishop Pierre and mm -hmm. Archbishop Hebda that will have the installation. Mm -hmm. Happy days. huh? Yes. for the Diocese of Crookston. We very much look forward to it. And I think that you will really love, you already have a great experience, positive information that will only be increased as you spend your time here, as it has for me. I've, uh, you know, just have six, eight months here, but you have all that time. So that'd be wonderful for them and so delighted. So welcome uh, and may you enjoy God's very special blessings in your ministry here in Crookston. Thank you very much, Bishop Pates. And thanks for your service here. I'm very, very grateful. Yeah, thank you.